So here we we'll quickly go through uh how to solve uh, a simple ordinary differential equation using the Euler method. So now uh we have to understand that the Euler method is designed only for pedagogical purpose, like it is just to teach, to have people get into the mood of how to solve differential equation as just the first introductory step in solving differential equation. So now it is not used in real life to solve real problems, All right? So to do that, like you want to track a ballistic missile or model the control of an airplane, monitor the spread of a disease and other stuff, we use a more advanced method of solving differential equations. So I will get to it now. The Euler method came from the natural definition of differentiation. So let us look at what that means. So uh, from Taylor series, so you have it that, uh, so here I'm going to insert question just for you to, to see what I'm doing. So, uh, so from Taylor series, we have it that the function f at the point x plus uh, h, which is, so that is equal to the function at x plus um, the derivative, let me see. Um, the f, uh, then the x. So at x, all right. So, um, maybe this will be kind of bracket that I can use here. Uh, one single bracket. Okay, I have this here. So let me just remove this guy. So I have a better tool here. So uh, this is f, and then this is x. All right. So, so the f, the x. All right. So, ah, uh, but this is done at x. So let me see if I can just uh, put this guy in a bracket, and then say this guy is evaluated at x. So let me just uh, put an index at x. So now then this is multiplied by delta h this is just an approximate uh, an approximate uh, representation so we have other terms of Euler. i mean of the of the taylor series but i'm just using these two terms just to show uh um i mean like it's just uh, for the linear approximation of of the function so now what it means is that if i have if I can differentiate the function, have the difference, the function that complete the differentiation of what I'm trying to get. So then what it means is that I can approximate the function at the next step. And that's exactly what this is. So this is exactly what we do in Euler method. So if I have, if I have a differential equation, let's say dy, uh, I'm going to insert equation again. So if I have a differential equation that I have as defined by dy dx, all right, so it's equal to a function of x and y, that is fine. So this is this here, this dy dx is basically this, all right? So I have this. So what it means is that I can find my y at the next time step by just using this expression. So what that means is then I can say, okay, uh, at the next time step, I'm going to have uh, y at uh, from the point that I'm starting with, uh, so x uh, plus uh, h, and then is equal to, so the y at the x that I am, all right, then plus, so dy dx times h, and that dy dx is this guy, this function, so I'm going to put that here then multiply that by each. So this is basically the Euler method. So, and then now we are going to program it and then see, I mean, just for one simple problem. So now the simple problem that we are going to, we are going to be using. So I'm going to change to, uh, the code mode, right? So, uh, like a tutor. 
I'm going to change to code mode. So the function we are going to be using, so f, is the function of, uh, here I'm writing in t and y, of course, so which is like x and y that I've defined this thing with. So I have this function, dy dx is this. So what I'm writing now is this dy dx, but I, I'm using t. By the way, just to, to, for you not to get confused, let me just use x, y. So this is my f of my x, y is, so I'm declaring in a handle. All right, sorry, uh, x, y, so this is how it is done. So I just call it f, all right, so x, y is given as uh, two minus the square root of y. I mean, it's interesting that uh, there is no t in the definition, but that is fine, all right? So this is the function we are trying to solve. But of course, there are, if the, if every time you perform numeric, uh, any integration of a function, there's something we add that we call the arbitrary func arbitrary uh, constant. And that is because there is a family of function that satisfy the differential equation. To identify which of the number it is exactly, you need an initial condition. So for this problem, we're given an initial condition that y at zero, so I will just call it y zero, is given to be one. So now we can get to work. So here, I'm just going to say, okay, so if we want to solve, we can we have our delta t that we want to use, which is the delta t, which is the del, is the h, all right? So let's say we are starting from t equal, uh, x equal to 0, all right? So we are solving from x equal to 0 to, let's say, x equal to 2. I want to take about 20 steps. So our x goes from uh, lane space from 0 to 2. And let's say we want to take uh, a step of, uh, let's say, 0 0.1. So in that case, we're going to be using 21 steps because 0 is part of the list, all right? So now, our y will have exactly the same size as x, all right? But we only know the first member of that. So let me just say zero size of x, all right? So size of x. Now... Then I'm going to say, okay, the first element, which is y1, then is equal to the initial guess. I'm sorry, initial condition, which is 1. So, right? So, that's actually y at x equal to 0. Because in the position y1 here, you have x, which is 1, and x is 0. The first element of x is 0. All right? All right. So, then, let us now quickly now do the solution. So, you are going to calculate for other values. So for other values, what we have is that you're going to say y, uh, I mean, for n equal to 2 to 21, because we've solved the, the first one is given. So what are you going to get? <coughs> so you have yn. yn is y at that n. All right? I mean, like, so you started with, uh, you are coming to yn, so you start from yn minus 1, all right, which is the one behind all right, then you get y n. Some people like to write it as m plus one. Some people write as m minus one. Any, any of them is fine. So, but let us maybe it's just to not confuse you. So let me just go with uh, the one that we use is plus use that plus one. So in this case, now I'm going to say y n is uh, this n, and then we're now going to do the trial to get the one in the next the next step. So y n plus one. So y n plus one, the next step is this guy, is y n plus the function evaluated at the current point. So uh, it makes sense for me to also say x n, just so that you get exactly what we're doing. So let me just say x n also as uh, uh, index uh, x using n. So this now uh, kind of kind of uniform, so, right? So I can just say then y, uh, y n that I have uh, brought out plus then I run the function all right that was given which is the f so f on uh, x n comma y n and then I multiply that by the delta so the delta I already know what it is so that is the reason why I have this in fact we can leave stay the delta here which is h I say we are stepping at 0 0.1 all right so that means uh, I can just write this x as uh, initial con initial point that we're starting with at h, and I'm going to the last point too. It's better this way so that you understand what's going on. So we started from zero, we step as at h, all right, and then we get to we get to two. 
So then everything is fine. So this now times h. So this gives us uh, y at m plus one. And then once we're done, we can store this inside the inside the solution. I say okay, y at n plus one. All right, then equal to y m plus one. All right, and so this is just the loop, and then it goes to the next step, and like that, and everything is computed. So at the end of the day, once the result is the this thing is done, we can then plot the graph and say we want to plot x and y. So we can run this, and then we'll see. So this is a simple Euler method, all right, of solving differential equations. It's just it's not something hard at all. Uh, okay, I did not. Uh, Okay, I did not suppress this, so you have a lot of results printed out. But this is the graph of the solution. So let us run that again. So now this is the solution. Now, uh, one interesting fact is that it is possible for you to solve this problem analytically. So, and then when you do that, you can actually check and then compare to know whether the result that you have here is correct or, or not. So I don't have the analytical solution now, but maybe I can just uh, try to solve it by hand and then come back and then compare that with this one in another video. So, thank you. That will be all.